start with you, and then we'll just go down. Again, I'd ask you if you could... Um, 5 to 7 minutes, something like that, if you could summarize it, because I'm sure we'd like to get into a discussion with each of you. And as I said, your statements will be made a part of the record in their entirety. Dr. Lesinski, uh, welcome, and, uh, and uh, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much for no, no, the button. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this important hearing on topic of great concern to all of us. My name is Dariusz Leszczyński, and I'm a research professor at the Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority in Finland. I'm also Guangbiao professor at the Zhejiang University in China, and adjunct professor of biochemistry at the University of Helsinki in Finland. At this point, I would like also to thank Dr. Zevra Davis, who made it possible for me to participate in this hearing. I have been working doing basic laboratory experimental research in the field of biological and health effects of mobile phones for the past 10 years. The findings of my research group suggest that the mobile phone radiation might induce biological responses. However, these findings do not yet prove that there exists health hazard. My institution, Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority in Finland, has issued two advisories for mobile phone users. The first advisory in 2004, as a part of the Nordic countries advisory that included Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Iceland. The second advisory in January 2009 was our own advisory for focused on children using mobile phones. Children are of special concern because of their developing brain also, studies from industry and from academia suggest that children's children brain is more exposed to mobile phone radiation than adult brain when using cell phone. Both advisories point out to the uncertainty of the scientific evidence and the need for precaution in the use of mobile phones. The intention of both advisories is not to discourage people from using the mobile phone technology. However, they remind us that there are still large gaps in the knowledge of the mobile phone radiation effects on humans. The currently available scientific evidence about the effects of radiation emitted by the mobile phones is contradictory. In each area of investigation, there are both studies showing effect and studies showing no effect. For details on this issue, I would like to refer you to my written statement. In the present situation of the scientific uncertainty, the statements that the use of mobile phones is safe are premature. And if I may repeat it, to make it certain that in the present situation of the scientific uncertainty, the statements that the use of mobile phones is safe are premature. In my opinion, the current safety standards are not sufficiently supported by science because of the very limited research on human volunteers, on children, and on the effects of long-term exposures in humans. This situation of uncertainty calls not only for precautionary measures, but also for further research. A part of the epidemiological, animal, and in vitro laboratory studies we need a new direction in research. We need international, well-designed, comprehensive, molecular-level human volunteer studies. These studies should be aimed at proving or disproving whether human body responds to mobile phone radiation. In spite of years of research, we still do not have the answer to this basic question. However, Obtaining research funds in this area is a major problem. Continuous assurances that there is no health risk that are coming from standard setting committees have caused that the funding agencies are reluctant to, find new, to fund new research. For many years, Europe has led the way in mobile phone research because the funding was available there. Research community 
is hoping that the U.S. will again get more involved in this much-needed research by providing necessary funding. In the meantime, while waiting for this new research, because of the existing scientific uncertainty, it is wise to support the use of precautionary measures in everyday use of mobile phones in order to, whenever reasonable possible, limit the body exposure to mobile phone radiation. Thank you for your attention, and I wait for your questions. Thank you very much for your testimony.